I would give you a what the buck, but I'm going to give you a break just because I got too much other stuff to go at here. The first one here is is not really it, – it's a what the, but it's it's one of those things that make you go, what the? That's awesome. <laughs> the Oakland A's played Kerry Underwoods before he cheats while introducing the Houston Astros lineup on opening day. <laughs> That was the most amazing thing oh I have my ever God. heard in my entire life. Kudos to the sound guy in Oakland. Kudos to the Oakland A's for letting it happen. Kudos to everything about it. And then the fans are throwing, like, like they one of them had a blow-up trash can they threw onto the field. Another <laughs> one said, you know what? I don't have a blow-up trash can. So he took a real trash can and threw it onto the field. Like, there oh, were, my God. There was so much happening. But the Oakland A's playing Carrie Underwood before he cheats while introducing the Astros lineup is my first ever amazing what My next what the goes out to uh, the music the other day. So first off, I smacked this box of chocolates all over the floor. Okay, and I'm you know we go on break. I'm keeping myself composed. I pick all the chocolate up and I'm eating it while we're on break because the container. I'm not putting it back in the container. It's already out. So I'm eating all this chocolate and all of a sudden I'm down like this picking up the chocolate and eating it. And all of a sudden I hear the music stop and the camera is right on me. So uh, I, I give the what hey, the Wyatt? to. I've yeah. got a confession to make. Yeah. I saw you stuffing your face with chocolates, and I ended the break early. <laughs> Are you serious? I did. <laughs> My next what the other night, let me grab my piece of paper to make sure I get my facts straight here. Goes mm -hmm. out to Carlos Dunlap. Carlos Dunlap just recently just re-signed with the Seattle Seahawks for two years, $14 million. However, he said he was not going to re-sign with the Seahawks until he knew Russ was coming back to Seattle. Newsflash, Russ was never leaving Seattle. Russ was staying, was staying in Seattle the whole time. It was simply just a ploy to try to get more people in there or to actually see what you can get out of Russell Wilson. I mean, the Chicago Bears literally threw the woodshed at you minus the keys, and the Seahawks are like, no, nah, that's not quite enough. We want more. So Carlos Dunlap, for you to even like speak on that, like saying, oh, I'm going to be here if like, Russ is there, you are a transplant anyways. You, you you don't even deserve to be there. And if you really wanted Russ to stay, you would have played that veteran minimum to bring more players in. So you get the what the call is done a lot. Come on, you don't really care about Russ. Let's just be honest. My next what the is going to go out to our boy. The baseball lackey himself, Hoffy. Hoffy, I blame you for Fernando Tatis getting injured. It's no longer a Madden jinx. It is now the Hoffy jinx. Hoffy picks him to be the NL MVP, picks him, you know, to win the West. And what happens? Four games in, Fernando Tatis swings a bat, misses the ball, and tears his shoulder off of his body. So, Hoffy... <laughs> For her injuring Fernando Very Tatis because you wanted to, to pick it. him to be the MVP, you get the. My next what the goes out to someone that I don't even know their name. Okay, so we are. I tried to give this what the last week, but I got cut off. So, it, but it's a beautiful story. So we are riding around in downtown Louisville, and we go down Main Street, and you know, you know, to get to the area where the restaurant we were, there is a little bit of a rough part in the middle. So we're driving through that rough part to get back to the regular main part of Louisville. We're driving down Main Street, uh, and in the middle of the road, like half a mile down the way we can see something just sitting there and we're like what in the world is this what what is that sitting in the middle of the road 
and it is a wheelchair. And we get a little closer, and we're like, what? And and turns out it's a person in a wheelchair. As we get closer, the person starts coming toward our car. Then they start wheeling backwards. While we're going down Main Street in Louisville, there is someone in a wheelchair going backwards, racing us down the uh, Main Street in Louisville. It was possibly the most incredible thing I think that I've ever seen. Um, quite the experience, I may say, but nonetheless to say uh, we, we did lose the race to, uh, as Tori Anderson says, Wyatt saw Bigfoot on the comments here. We did lose the race to Bigfoot uh, in the wheelchair. So, you know, give or, give or take how you want to take that. So, yeah, yeah, person in Louisville, Louisville, my eyes for seeing it, um, <laughs> us for losing the race. You guys. My next what the other night is I got my notes here, guys. And, uh, you know, guys, I always tell a great story. I've been to Walmart and Target. Like, I like I got some great stories. All of my stories are true, <laughs> by the way. No fluffing of the story. This is stuff really, really happens. So, basically, me and my wife, we put our house up on the market to sell uh, combs. I believe it was, like, late January, early Feb, February. I can't re remember for sure. But our closing date was going to be February 20, 26. Long story short, the buyers backed out of the contract because we had uh, basically our, our roof's like 30 years old and apparently roof's only supposed to last 25 years or something. Like, long story short, I don't I don't really know. But nonetheless, they, they backed out of it and we had to basically get a new roof. Well, we had this guy come check out our roof and said there's some hail damage on there. Awesome. So we file a claim for our insurance. This is February 2nd when we file the claim for our insurance. I have all the dates written down right here. Feb February 2nd, our claims adjuster said within 48 hours, there, 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 there will be somebody out there to come in and, and expect your roof. Um, it is now April 6th. The inspector just showed up last Tuesday. So um, I think that was April Fool's Day, actually, I, like I think. Dang, it was. So over two months, the longest 48 hours of my life, he finally shows up. And then he uh, basically says he forgot his ladder. So you waited almost three months to come look at my roof. You knew you were coming to look at my roof. You are a claims adjuster and you forget your ladder? So come on, claims adjuster. You get the what? My next what the other night is going to go out to Wyatt Williams. Wyatt Yikes. Williams, how did you not know that I ended the break early? We were about 30 seconds in, and you had just started shoving chocolate into your mouth. Out of all the things that we do to you on this show, messing around with you, joking around with you, you still thought that you were two minutes into chewing chocolate that you just forgot and lost time. <laughs> how would you not expect me to end the break early when I can see you backstage? Like, so I, I don't know what to tell you, Wyatt. You I, never expect it when we mute you. You never expect it when, when you're eating chocolate. We're going to pan in on you. You ne you had chocolate all over your chin all week from when you came back from vacation. Uh, you called it a beard, but I know for a fact it was chocolate that was stuck to your face. <laughs> so, Wyatt Williams, you get the what the. The worst part is I even like knew to myself, I was like, that couldn't have been two minutes. Like there is no way that was even like a minute. I even thought to myself, I was like, that was so fast. There were there is no way we were even relatively close. Gosh, but now now I hey, now 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 I know. I I know now. Uh, okay. But anyways, my next what the goes out to Gonzaga. Okay. We all saw that national championship and we were all expecting a 32 and 0. I think everybody really was. Uh awesome. But 31 and one, of course you weren't, Buck. But 31 and one is just so ugly. Like 32 and 0 is so cool and such a good looking thing. But 31 and one, I just, I just not, it's not right. It's not right. I, I don't, I don't know what it is. So Gonzaga, yeah, the, you guys get the 31 and.
Mine hold, up, the, hold up, hold uh, up, hold up. Buck, put yes. us up, put us all on the screen. Gotcha. Before you get to your what the, mm -hmm. have we really gotten to the point where we're going to give a what the to a team that went 31 <laughs> and 1? Yeah, I just you like, can't. What, you how can't. can you give a team that went 30? Why have you ever gone 31 and 1 in anything in your life? I have eating chocolate. The one was whenever you ended a break early. <laughs> <laughs> Fair so enough. Go ahead, Buck. All right, so my next what the is going to go out to N or ex NFL GMs on TV talking like they are the best general managers in the world. So as you guys know, the NFL draft is just around the corner. What three weeks away? If I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, starts April 28th. So it is the seventh now. So you do the math. 20, 21 days, right? So my. What the is going to go out to these general managers talking like they know exactly what they should do, f like if they were the Jets or if they were the Panthers or, or like like if they were the Chicago Bears. Uh, newsflash, you are a ex-NFL general manager for a reason because you were not very good at your job. Let's just be flat and honest. The reason why you're on TV, you're not very good at your your job. So uh, Bill Napoleon or whatever his name is, the like the old coach general manager, you guys know exactly who I'm talking about. You get the what the, man. What the, I was going to try to be funny and be like, you know what? I am going to give Buck a what the. But then I start reading stuff that's going on in the comments section. Don't do it. So, you're stealing my what the. I know Tori exactly what Anderson, this is. Tori Anderson, you're getting the what the. Tori Anderson is over here in the chat line flirting with Nana. Stop it. You he literally took my what the from me. Blowing. You took my what the. He, he you just talking. took my what the. He, he tells Nana you have a soul. Nana's sending him kissy faces. So, Wyatt, I don't know what's going on over here, but Pappy Tori Anderson, uh, you need to stop what you're doing, sir, because it is not cool. Not cool at all. Tori Anderson, you get the what the. I don't think he's got anything to say. Uh, no, no, I'm good. Just, just move on. <laughs> that, 